Hello and welcome. Well, this is part three of the new and improved buckboard flyer. I built a buckboard flyer several years ago and, and I'm going to improve on it this time. Anyway, if you, uh, if you haven't seen part one and two, be sure and check them out. Uh, we built this framework for the drive mechanism in the last episode and I was fitting these axles to it and I realized it was warped instead of the axles being like that. It's a two-piece axle. Instead of them being good and straight, they were kind of V-shaped. And it kind of worried me, but it straightened out really well. Uh, I was really surprised. Thank goodness it straightened out and there's a lot of work to build. Anyway, I was just fitting the uh, disc brake brackets here and getting all the axle spacing right. And I'm going to mount these brackets kind of odd shaped looking brackets after I after this is installed in, in the wood part of the go-kart. Right now I just was fitting the axles, gonna get a, cut them to length and cut the keyways in there. Okay, got a couple uprights here. I didn't show making them in the video. I kind of screwed them up. Uh, actually, I recovered from where I screwed them up. But I'm going to face off the ends of this so it fits snugly between there. And I got these things here. They're off a, a Honda uh, Cush sprocket setup. There's four of them in a sprocket, but this is threaded, and they fit snugly into that, and this is going to press into here, and that's a cushion to help absorb motor vibration. i got to take off a little bit of the top of the threads there. Probably a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. What's going to happen is those threads are going to get mutilated over time and then I won't be able to get the bolt out. But I'm hoping it won't be too severe and, and that won't be the case. That's what we're making now. And this is why I have a four jaw self-centering. They're not good for much but they're excellent for this.
Okay. I'll make the final position and adjustments on that after it's on the go-kart, after it's on the car. Thinking about this really, this is a real hard rubber on this foot. So I'm putting that right there as, an, as a tension adjustment. Plus I'll have a sliding adjustment this way. Okay, this is my steering knuckle. It's going to have an inch and a quarter bar in there that it pivots on. But I want to flatten these two sections in there, but I don't want to go all the way out to the ends because that little extra uh, metal on the ends there will reinforce that. So I got, the, got it set up in the middle here. Hopefully this goes okay. Okay, these stirring knuckles turned out pretty good, and I'm figuring out where to cut these axles to weld them in. And in doing so, I checked the plans on my computer and realized that the 30-inch wheelbase that I was remembering was to the center of the tread and not the outside of the wheels. I was thinking it was the outside of the wheels. But I wanted to make this one 32-inch. So I, I realized I've made my back axle too short, so I'm going to have to remake the back axle. Not something I wanted to do, but not a big deal. And anyway, I'm going to cut these off and create a little shoulder there that will go in here, and then I'll weld it on the inside. So we'll make the front axle, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll remake the rear axle off camera. Okay, I need to take off about 60,000.
I've got this uh, tubing tilted in my vise at seven and a half degrees. That's going to be my caster. And I measured it level with the vise and divided it in half. So now I need to move it uh, 67 thousandths. There it is right there. That's half with it tilted. I use my edge finder on this edge. I use my boring bar. I wish I had an inch and a quarter end mill, that would be better, but boring boring bar should work. As long as every as long as it doesn't come loose in the vise. <laughs> To cut one end and then cut it to length on the other end. Make sure everything goes all right. Okay, I ground a little bit off the boring bar. It was in a large section there. It should work. Okay, that's got it. Well, there it is. Front axle with Seven and a half degrees caster. I got to take these bars out of the uh, knuckle and, and weld them to this axle. Well, there's the front axle. You can see the uh, about seven degree or seven and a half degree caster angle tip this way. Well, there's the front axle assembly just about done. I got to weld some steering arms coming back. They got to be angled back to the center of the back axle on the car. Uh, Ackerman, a guy named Ackerman, came up with that design. It, what it does, it makes one wheel turn slightly more, the inside wheel, than the outside wheel in a turn. Stops one, one wheel from scooting in a turn. Uh, I'll probably weld those arms and put a tie rod in there and then wait till I get it on the car to figure out my rack and pinion. Hopefully I can figure that out. Rack and pinion would be way better. Then next week, we'll build a sprocket hub and try to utilize these, they call it a cush drive. It's, this came off a Honda 125. They go in the wheel and it makes, makes the sprocket, the, the pulse of the motor isolates that from the wheels. I think it'll make the wheels hold up better. I'd really like to utilize that, but I got a problem. Let me show you. Right there is where my sprocket's going to go. Only got three quarters of an inch in there, which is enough. But if I try to put that cush drive on there, on the sprocket, it's going to be pretty tight in there. Uh, I didn't plan on those bearings being that wide 
on the inside, the locking collar mechanism. I couldn't find the specs on it when I ordered the bearings, but we'll make it work. That's what we're going to do next week. Uh, we may actually get started making the wood parts to the car. Anyway, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.